we have gathered here to uh, discuss how can we design in india make in india in india train in india and heal in india and uh, let me just perimeter the discussion and then we move forward so if we look at our sector the largest healthcare sector the largest piece is hospitals 60% then pharma 25% medtech around 10% including diagnostics and health insurance around 5% so these are the main areas and perhaps we will not be able to talk about health insurance today let us talk about hospitals pharma and medtech how we can design in india make in india in india train in india and heal in india and let us begin with design in india and in design in india let us speak about diagnosis diagnostic equipment that is reagents uh, equipments imaging let us talk about pharma and let us talk about medtech also treatment venues hospital home so diagnostics pharma medtech hospital or home healthcare this is broadly what i'd like to uh, start with and i open the house now any person who would like to kick off the discussion as to what we could do to design in india in either of these sub segments that i have spoken of or let me ask my friend dr harsh mahajan to begin by telling us on diagnostic piece whether imaging or uh, reagents or machines what what is your take how can we design in india better uh, thank you bhavan and uh, wonderful to be here i think the pandemic if we take that as the starting point laid bare the fact that we have so many innate capabilities within us which had not been exploited also the regulatory framework has always been of a stifling nature and due to the nature of the pandemic suddenly you know the government was open to any and every kind of new innovation and frankly it was a public private partnership in the true sense otherwise the trust deficit that exists between the two sides actually stifles any kind of innovation growth new ideas so we had within a few months companies coming up with testing kits the agents which actually made us pretty self sufficient to think that from a few hundred tests that this country was capable of to 2 and a half million tests that we ultimately achieved and with you know capacity still left within he it is testament to <coughs> what we are capable of similarly on the side of labs you know there were a handful of labs capable of doing rt pcr testing and today we know there are over 3000 that have the capacity in fact maybe it's over capacity and i'll conclude by saying that the government is the government and it will stifle once its ends are met it reverts back to what it was so from 4500 rupees a test for rt pcr which was right at that time because input costs were very high new equipments were bought the other rupees now is uh, again testament to the fact that aap kariye aap invest kariye and phir hum aapka laga gor denge so we are left with so much of unused equipment and today when from 2.5 million we do probably 300000 tests all of which majority is done in the government sector we are left holding the can and and so and india is the only country and i have done this research 
where the cost or the price of RT-PCR testing and I take one example just to prove a point has come from that 4.5 4 uh, at least 1500 would have been the reasonable point when everything would settle. It remains you know maybe 20% lower, 30% <coughs> lower in other parts of the world except our country. So with that I rest my case uh, uh, that when in need then the private sector is you know, looked at, otherwise again, it becomes an uh, object of ridicule and uh, uh, to flog. No, no, you're absolutely right. The uh, COVID unleashed uh, or lowered the licensing and the regulation requirement. And they say that innovators are from Mars, but regulators are from Venus. For some time, they were coming from the same planet. However, as Arsh says that now they are back to being separate and they are again stifling uh, the, the environment and we will talk about the uh, beautiful money point also he has said regarding price control. Uh, please, Apuli. And please just introduce yourself uh, through a 30 second uh, uh, thing before you start talking so that we know each other and feel free to drop the honorific or keep the honorific. We will reciprocate and address you in the same way as you address us so that context will be not important, content will be important. Go ahead. Friends, my name is Dr. Nilesh Shah. I am a group president of Metropolis, chain of laboratories in the country. Came from Bombay for this meeting. I am very happy to be here and uh, thanks for setting the contest. Um, uh, I'm a laboratory and so I, will, I want to restrict to the laboratory side in diagnostics. Uh, as Sir said, you know, I also agree that pandemic time has been big learning. And first time we come to know that there are so many manufacturers. So far there were manufacturers, Indian manufacturers, but they were not innovators. This time I see much more innovation and bringing things on table as early as possible. For the first time I see under Metropolis, well, I make most of the decision on technology and which vendor to be taken and we have been 99% with international vendors. We have not bought anything from India, including a tip. But now things are changing. I got similar quality surveys from Indian manufacturers and we moved for COVID like test for our Indian manufacturers. Now in a lab there are multiple verticals, so I have seen on molecular diagnostic, a lot of people manufacturing in India with an alliance international. But during COVID, they innovated and they created their own products and they started selling. But now I am seeing even other verticals, whether you say hematology, equipment as well as reagent, chemistry, equipment as well as reagents. Now, very recently, somebody on immunoassay and very soon somebody is coming on autoimmunity like that. Literally all the verticals Within lab also, there are Indian manufacturers. Now what we need to do, let me come more there instead of giving gyan. There are two things need to be done. I think government as well as users need to support these Indian manufacturers. They are good in better in pricing, they are providing good services, they are bending backwards to compete with international players and quality is not bad, really not bad. I think they are accepted. But labs like us, there is a mindset, you know, I want to be having technology which is, you know, USFD approved, CE approved and which is all CAP accredited labs, 3000 labs across the world, they are using only have to use that. Even when I have done comparison, I find there is only 99, uh, 16, 17 difference, very negligible difference, which clinically does not make a significant difference. Still, my mindset is not changing today also. So, I think the mindset from the user side like us and some support to these manufacturers if it is provided I think we can be soon uh, 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 you know self-sufficient on the day-to-day -day stuff so that's great, what I think. Great point in fact 150 years back German uh, machinery was looked down upon uh, UK if there, there used to be a joke in UK and a lot of Europe that this is German it won't work. Even cutlery won't work. Like China was looked down 20 years back. So it, it is a matter of time and I think we are arriving where our respect 
uh, in the market will go up of domestic companies and I'm glad to hear that I was still recently I was on the board of uh, Transasia Biomedicals and uh, perhaps you're right we did not make enough products but the other wave which has come is bringing a lot of domestic products here. Please, uh, Sunil. Yeah, so uh, my name is Sunil. I'm a partner with Quadria. We are a healthcare corporate private equity fund. So I invest in uh, all kinds of healthcare companies from services to products. Uh, so my take on this, uh, when we talk about design uh, in India, has two elements, a product side and a service side. Because ultimately, we are solving for healthcare needs. And everything has to sort of congregate to, uh, you know, support that uh, objective. So, you know, the big thought that I have is uh, there are lots of models of success within India across industries that we should try and use. Some of it has been on the private side and some of it has been on the government side. So if I take the product, uh, you know, there are models of success of auto industry, uh, how, you know, uh, Maruti became a success and now is a global example of how Indian products are being used for, uh, for global markets because it was sort of while the core engine came from Japan, the entire utility and every other functionality was sort of modeled in how Indians will use it. So was the case with Nano. Nano was a complete, you know, grounds up kind of a model. So there are enough and more complicated examples because, you know, product in, in, uh, in healthcare has mechanical side, has chemical side. So auto is a good mechanical example. Pharma is a good chemical example of, you know, how you can actually use those success, you know, to create a third wave of success, you know, uh, uh, in diagnostic and few other parts of healthcare. As far as the services is concerned, again, there are lots of models of success. If we can get to the remotest part to conduct election, if we can get, you know, something like Aadhaar successful, I guess, you know, the problem of uh, accessibility can be sorted in, in, in a big way. So there are enough and more examples, I guess it's just about now opening up our minds, leaning on those industries and then using it. The best thing and you know, the, the, the best time that we are in today is uh, the whole entrepreneurship, the environment of entrepreneurship, where first generation are entrepreneurs are coming. No baggage, no legacy, 100% confidence that you know, this can be done in this way. And if you galvanize models of success with entrepreneurship and a lot of money that is pouring into the country, through private equity or whichever part, I guess, you know, we'll be able to solve quite a bit of it. Correct. Products as well as services, both a uh, lot, lot of opportunities in either space. We have somebody from MyLab. Uh, MyLab, uh, because we're talking, okay, go ahead, please. You go ahead, please. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, my name is Pius from Core Diagnostics. Uh, we're a lab focused uh, on molecular diagnostics primarily. Uh, I'd like to, I'd really resonate the points that you say. Uh, I lead the technology and procurement teams and one of the, uh, there's two uh, trends and both of them match with what you're saying. One is we uh, saw so much improvement while doing our COVID processes that we realized that uh, extraction kits that we used to buy, uh, that got developed in-house that we always used to buy for all our high-end oncology tests. Now we can use some of those that are at about the fourth of the cost for uh, our oncology testing also. And that's something that didn't exist before. There was really, we only bought from abroad. Uh, that is one. Uh, and the second thing is that real blockage that you said about Indian made uh, uh, machines. We have, we, uh, I get involved in a lot of the procurement decisions that we eventually have to take. And it comes down to the fact that clinicians say that no we don't want this we want something that is a US FDA approved thing so we are only going to accept results from that so the uh, uh, it's I think in the interest of both the, the government being able to create like maybe at least a cost model that makes it much more affordable or us doing some research as a whole di uh, diagnostics industry together to say that this is absolutely correlated to anything that you can get abroad and it works here because the costs are much better but we still just go with that oh we'll only take a US FDA uh, approved machine and uh, reagents and that's the real challenge. You know, see, for, oh, sorry I'm interrupting between but you know if our mindset as a user changes yes. you know Indian version can be tried first yes. it has to be validated we are not even open to validate at times I'm telling you I'm the culprit as well we are not even open to validate if you validate and support the research, the innovation, okay, okay, you make some changes here and there, it will be good or it is already good. 
and we start using it, I think clinicians can follow. If we go with confidence, now my report is correct. I have done enough validation. It is now NABL and CAP accredited. Proficiency testing is passing. Why they will not accept? Yeah. I think that push has to come from the users. Yeah. One addition. Uh, even the government, when it advertises, advertises C mark US FDA, especially where equipment are concerned. So that's a policy change which needs to happen. Number one. Number two, within the country, actually our accreditation agencies are also lacking. Slow. So someone made the CT scanner in Chandigarh. Now the guy doesn't know where to get it accredited. You know, where to get uh, the Certified. certification. And so that is another thing. And as has been said about uh, in-house uh, uh, tests which are developed, even in the US, you know, there is a agency which will say, yes, this is fine. That is something we need to do here. ICMR did that during the pandemic. But there has to be a permanent system where I can go with my test and then say, yes, this is fine. ICMR was also slow and allegedly partisan. Uh, we, uh, from TransAsia, we submitted a, a COVID kit. But uh, the approvals did not come because there was a very big competitor who considers themselves a rival uh, was uh, pushing hard from the other side. But you are absolutely correct that we need to have these accreditation agencies and we need to uh, have them working efficiently. Somebody was surprised. I'm Govind, the uh, CEO and the founder of NMC Genetics. Uh, we work in a very small niche. I mean, we're not hospitals, we're not in diagnostics. We just specialize in identifying adverse drug reactions in the patient and helping them to avoid it or prevent it. Now, even in the, such a niche area, I mean, I mean, India, most of the guidelines, not I'll say most of the guidelines, but all the guidelines which we pick up is guidelines which are there in the US or Europe. The same thing has happened in the IT and the pharma, where the guidelines were set and then India actually took over on the generics market or services market. <coughs> But the area where we operate, it is a little different. I cannot blindly pick the markers which is happening in the Caucasian and try to recreate here. You now the design is there, but I cannot use it because it will. The moment I start using it, it will not give the same results. At the DNA, I'm talking about the very specifically. And similarly, I think it also happened the uh, COVID too. The first set there are only two markers, and everyone started looking at the two markers and test created. Then it was at three markers, but the guidelines were actually coming from outside. But how we are doing? So what I'm trying to say here is bring it here is as long as it is a standard, I think we are amazingly good at creating a scale. But if you have to create something very specific to India, then it's a very hassle. We don't even know. At least I don't even know where to go, get it done, approve it, regulate it. And if I take this thing to a doctor and say that. If I say it is FDA guideline, they are happily accepted. But if I say, if the FDA approved, but it may not work in Indians, and this is a something which we have created from the scratch, it's working really wonderful, it's a lot of resistance. And it is true, I mean, I'm just giving an example where having a coffee like antiplatelet response. Sorry, I'm just taking the example just to create an understanding here. Clopidogrel is the world's most Caucasians, only 9% of the patient do not respond to the antiplatelet. Test is same, the markers are same, the guidance is same, but here it is like a 37% patient do not respond. So the, but there is no guideline which actually says that you put a tap on it and say this is the thing which need to be accepted and do it. So we need to work on the basic design level where it says it is built in India, built for Indians and will work only in India. But that whole regulatory pipeline is still very gray area and, and we struggle because when we take it to the doctor, the pharma sells in different way and we have to follow the same protocol, but it doesn't work out. But and that is certainly a place, I mean even the instruments which are built in US we import it because there is a FDA tapa on it. But why not we can have a, like FDA, China has an FDA China. Yeah. We can use it in FDA so, India or something and then start agree, promoting it. Agree. This is a very good point. In fact, for China to have its own standards is also a protectionist measure. Not only 
to uh, promote their own manufacturing etc china based companies but also they find a way of not adhering to international patent rights when you ask for standards for your own country then because they will be little different from the global standard your the hold of the international patents will not be so strong on you so from that point also from the industry's growth point of view also you wanted to say something else? okay anybody else please yeah go ahead please i'm shichita gupta i am a founder of a company called pink shastra health solutions we have two verticals actually one is So you can just repeat your introduction. Yes, yes, no worries. <laughs> Shuchita Gupta, I'm co-founder of a company called Pink Shastra Health Solutions. We have two verticals. One is called Care for Parents, which is about digitizing the whole healthcare solutions without owning anything actually, because we believe in collaborating. I mean, for example, if we are 10, 15 people in this room, I don't think we need to duplicate, like you said in your initial address. We have to collaborate and make one plus one eleven. so what is that and second is called health setu where we are trying to have these integrations so that all health related information can be freely exchanged can be freely made available for better diagnosis by the doctor for better information by the customer themselves now unfortunately we work in silos the hospital is working on its own the lab is working on its own and then you have the all these devices whether it's a smart watch whether it's your bp machine whether it's your blood glucose machine or implantable devices or whatever it is and health insurance separate and everything so can you imagine where all your health related information is lying and god forbid if somebody other than yourself has to gather it it's a nightmare so the whole idea is to use technology to connect all the service providers to connect the customers with all the service providers and be better off than the west i mean like we've been talking why ape them when we are better off than them and i think we've proven that with covin with our aadhar with our upi that we are way ahead as far as technology is concerned if we want to do it so even though the government has said that aabhar digital health mission will be brought we don't know when it's going to happen so our idea is the more we can collaborate with each other i mean really nobody is the owner of any data so if metropolis hospitals can have access to all lab reports of any customer coming to them isn't it just better for the doctor and the customer if the lab can get the medical history of the patient who's coming for a particular test i'm sure the lab will do slightly something different knowing the medical history or the family history of the customer and so on and so forth so we actually want to be that technology pioneer in india where we've actually started working on api integrations with labs and with all kinds of devices and everything to get all data in one place and we are digitizing the lab reports so you give me lab reports of three different labs and i can do a trend analysis and give it to you on my digital platform because hb1 ac will be called hb1 c only you know whether it's dr lal mahajan dang or anybody else So what I have to do? I have to just digitize it and plot the graph with those three different readings. I don't care which lab it belongs to. Yeah. 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 Uh, I'm Dr. Mayipa Sitev, uh, Chairman Medical Director, Centre for Site Cooper by Hospitals. Uh, whatever discussion is emerging, actually, what I feel as regards making India or the uh, taking the Indian industry forward is to play on our strengths. And though it may look uh, uh, Fancy good to say that uh, if uh, we have to get into high technology and things like that, India is still not there. If today I have to get a new technology, I have to say get a first of all a cataract, so a cataract uh, suit made or a, uh, a smile suit made or something like that, or even a good microscope made. Uh, we are still not there, and I think that needs more investment, more investment in hypothesis and postulates, and in research and development, which I think the uh, the funding is still not there to that extent uh, private equity is playing a good part but i think they want to start here and now so that uh, our strengths are for example i'll give you uh, an example in ophthalmology uh, intraocular lenses were all imported from abroad 
and then Arvind Eye Care System came where they had enough and more demand from within their in house and they picked up a second hand uh, machine because the lenses were moving from non foldable to foldable lenses so they picked up the non foldable manufacturing that's made of PMM and they could manufacture a lens in less than 100 rupees and they changed the industry within India from that perspective that they had so much of this thing and they started selling it to other people and overseas and then today intraocular lens manufacturing industry in India makes I think as many lenses as uh, is made by the US companies etc and in India today the intraocular lenses majority of the lenses are Indian that are being used but the new technologies that are coming in does come from overseas but the what you say without the bells and whistles the actually standard of care lenses etc they are still made in India so that is our core strength and the prices are very very competitive and they have been able to capture the market and all India Ophthalmological Society or Indian this thing uh, we ophthalmologists we do support them uh, there are obviously some patients who will come and say we important to but by far uh, when you go to tire 2, tire 3 skin lens does not remain uh, a conclusive criteria for which lens has to be put from where it is mainly in the cities that people say you will call the company that has started etc. Same thing I am seeing in biosimilars. I am seeing the same thing happening in anti wedges uh, for uh, age related macular degeneration. An injection used to cost 18,000 rupees, and now we have something that's being manufactured, say, by Intel or something at 8,000 rupees. And we are supporting them as already ophthalmological society, and we run trials for them and we validate that their data. So, validation is something which is very important. Now, if you look at the third important thing that is data, the availability of numbers. Uh, I am personally running FDA phase 1, phase 2, phase 3 trials for a new uh, Elita system for the lenticular extraction and India was chosen by Johnson & Johnson. First site was India, second site was India, now they are going to Singapore. So we have enough and more of uh, availability of uh, the surgical skill as also the patient base. And it's, I think things are improving, you have the ethics committee, you have the approvals and all that that we can get and we, we do get it, it's quite a lot in our mind There are these things. The third thing where we can excel is digital. Artificial intelligence uh, is working on it. We have enough people asking us for diabetic retinopathy. Tomorrow you will have a person going to a mall and his fundus photograph being taken and an AI telling him whether you have diabetic retinopathy or not. That is where India can excel. So, pharma products, Sun Pharma is doing extremely well in ophthalmology, all in other things uh, overseas. Uh, now, you are having going to have Nelscar put up the largest manufacturing plant in the world uh, for these uh, trades. So, these are not high technology things, but they are the uh, they are large volumes and which give you a large business. Today's story is Zeiss, a German company, but they are using the They manufacture them in uh, in uh, the blanks, etc. May come from China, but the actual manufacturing, the grinding, polishing, everything, reflective coating goes in Bangalore, and they export it back to about 14, 15 countries. Okay, so 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 what I am saying is that we should concentrate. I have still not been able to get a good laser manufactured out of India. I can get a slit lamp that is manufactured out of India or the chair units on which we sit, etc. So, as of now, the big money is not coming in for the big technology to come in. But even if we concentrate in India on the smaller technologies, there is enough and more scope that we are doing very well. And pharma is this thing, digital technology is this thing. Uh, what has uh, COVID taught us is home care. That is also something very thing we are in ophthalmology today. I can send somebody and take a picture of almost everything and do it there. The number of surgeries we do, for example, you will be uh, you may or may not know, but India does more cataract surgeries than US, Europe, and China put together. That's the kind of number that we are doing. And today, people from overseas come to pray from us. And we do shoulder to shoulder or better life surgery demonstration with those guys. So, what I am very clear the cost of uh, uh, the surgery that has been done is much less. And we have, we can get technology from overseas to do all those things. The biggest step that happened in ophthalmology was when Professor Badal Mohan was chief architect. And Narayan Tiwadi was the uh, finance minister, and his wife and Dr. Madan Mohan were classmates. 
thousands of weak hours under the national program of control of blindness, all of the medical equipments are duty of them. As side saving, side saving equipments. And it was OGL. So all of us could, uh, I was in anger at that time, but people could afford. So one single step of putting it under OGL and making it zero duty actually changed the landscape of uh, ophthalmology and microsurgery, etc. So I think we should concentrate, India should concentrate on the strengths which we have already. And these are smaller areas that may not be fancy areas of things like other kit banani hai COVID ki wo baat achi ban jayegi aapke. Magar agar aapko koi electrophoresis ya koi malak bada MRI ya se latest banana hai, wo shayad aaj aapko hi bana paayenge. To uske upar tawajjo dena to because some these things look very attractive. Yeah. But like in cars, he was saying, puri car banana malak that may be something, but uske mein tools chote chote malak jo machine parts hai wagera wo bana sakte hain. Procedures all very bana sakte hain those things. So same thing we should do in healthcare. That is what our focus should be that. All these things that uh, I have talked about, we can really and they form the major bulk of the consumable cost. Very, well, very well made. Point very well made. I just like to say how I how well. I don't totally agree with the point. I understand that the phase one should be that we focus on the smaller yes. components, but we will never become self-sufficient if yes. we leave the bigger machinery and dependence on others. It's a revolution. Yeah, I am just yeah exactly. I understand the route to evolution. I understand your thought on the route to evolution. Even China, today, even China yes. today does not manufacture any top I, I class of thermic equipment. You, I cannot get, I can get a microscope out of China, that is one step ahead of it. I can get a keratometer, I can get a slit lamp, etc. But I can't get a femto laser from China. Yeah, I, I agree to the route that you are uh, actually uh, setting in that, okay, this could be the route to progress. But we have to look at the larger goal also. We should not lose sight so, of that. Uh, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I know, echoing what uh, my father said, you know, good enough quality. There is the concept of good enough quality. It yeah, may be the best yeah. quality because even if you go to the US and if you look at radiology, it will be only the top 10% which will have the best machines. All the rest may be 10, 20, 15 year old machines. And so good enough quality which gives you the correct diagnosis, get, gives you the correct treatment, especially backed by the man behind the machine. That's equally important and we are fortunate in this country that we have fantastic, uh, uh, you know, healthcare workers. So, starting with good enough quality and aspiring, I mean, if we can send, uh, 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 you know, land on the moon, I'm sure we, we can do that also. But maybe 10 years, 15 years, yeah. And those same companies will, you know, they will actually reach the top. So, I'll just come to you. What's your, uh, uh, just give us a th uh, 10 second, 15 second introduction so that we know. Sorry, I'm, pra I'm Pragya. Uh, I'm from Merishi Ayurveda. Okay, yeah, go ahead. You were saying something. I want to say I'm Sachin, I'm a neurosurgeon and I established a neuro center by the name of IDS Hospital, Institute of Brain and Spine. We have two centers in Delhi and CR. So, I have tried this thing of uh, trying to make in India, but what we lack here is a validation. So, in my, uh, in my branch of medicine, and the quality has to be topmost and uh, accreditation and validity is not there. Give you example that we have a deep brain stimulation device where you plant the electrodes in the brain to control Parkinson's. The cheapest one is costing around 8.5 lakh rupees to the patient. If we try making that, the cost can come down to 1 lakh rupees. But then the validation is the key. So, again moving to something like, I am into neuromodulation where we implant chips and uh, wires into the brain and spinal system for correction. This is a very simple device, small pacemaker, which can cost less than one lakh rupees to control somebody's blood and bowel function after they've lost it due to trauma or spine injury or whatever. And that is costing seven and a half lakh rupees. So the potential patients who need that, only less than one person can afford that. Insurances don't recommend them or they don't uh, honor that or the cover is not enough. So we tried making them pre-COVID, uh, we put in some more money, we tried contacting MSME, other schemes for some kind of innovation, startup India, but nothing moves beyond a point here. But the major reason was validation. Even if we start making and bring down the cost, the Indian market is small enough initially to begin with till the, you know, 
there is not enough awareness and we cannot export because of validation and indian hospitals won't use it because doctors won't uh, like take a blame on their own if now then again we started to work with uc on some research product for like cerebral palsy and certain things we will stimulate the spinal cord and train from outside without any surgery we published a paper and then the best we could do was get fda approval make it in india export that back and they would have the name so we'll just be like china today so uh, we do feel the need for a true validation agency the government because validation cannot come from private side government has to intervene government has to have an r and d and validation but yes there are people out here many people out here in this table itself who can help and the top quality ones i think great so what i'd like to say here beautiful points have come two i would say uh, allied views have come uh, or parallel views one which has come from mr shrijita and you that we need to collaborate among each, each other and make in india become self sufficient the other which has come from dr wahipal and to some extent from you also that this collaboration should not be limited to indians only because other people in the world are also galloping should we not learn from their stride should we not pick their baton also and take it forward which which is why perhaps what is happening geopolitically friend shoring where countries are doing business with countries with with whom they have long established uh, peace similar political system similar economic systems good protection of their ip rights etc so i feel that the perimeter of collaboration needs to be increased uh, and maybe the foreigner has also to be brought in because as you said evolution is important today the non foldable lens tomorrow the foldable lens like in china 20 years back when they started making disposables people said they will make disposables today they are giving a run for their money to the philips and the siemens for their imaging equipment in the next 5 years you will see china will come arrive on the imaging equipment space alongside philips and siemens so i feel that this is what the group is kind of uh, uh, pointing towards that perhaps there is a possibility of these two thoughts merging while we need to be self sufficient and especially in such spaces which are not uh, medical devices are not only medical today they are defense products because a uh, device can be hacked my uh, implant can be hacked thousands of implants can be hacked so we, we have reached a very critical space so i feel that self sufficiency is very important perhaps it may not come overnight validation has to come great effort has to come on validation both from the industry as well as from the government ha bol so one of the point i just want to add and we talk about it so in india when you make a kit or machine or some solution the regulatory is coming from different different sources i am not on that side of the table but i in fact lots with this startups and innovators so i learned that and one of the very glaring thing which i came across last week that one of the agency i don't know name the government agency asked for right if you want to launch and if you want to approve it is in writing you have to give me 20% of right now this actually becomes a big burden on a new startup or innovator now it should be other way around the government should be actually giving subsidy or something something like that but it is other way around if you want to get an approval for every selling you do this will be the right So this is one of the thing I want to talk. Yeah, great point. Also, another point in the last discussion, there were a couple of other valuable points which came up. One was low cost uh, avenues, low cost venue of healthcare. For example, Dr. Mahipal mentioned that if it is done in the mall, and that's a much lower cost uh, uh, avenue of healthcare, so then the cost will come down. Another point which. came up was appropriate technologies where i was reminded of schumacher schumacher has done a book called buddhist economics he says that buddhist economics means do with less 
just appropriate technology you manage and he said this will be the technology which will work very well in developing countries and poorer countries however it didn't because developing countries and poor country people they said that this appropriate technology is for poor people i want the appropriate technology for rich people so it failed and i have done a two i, I do a two minute which is called deep slides i'll set send it across to all of you on this that we need to somehow find ways of reducing the cost and giving the same experience as is coming from top level technology so this was uh, and and there is another point also that if lower cost healthcare workers will be able to do your task then they will reduce the cost so some some uh, things will require intuitive decision for which high qualifications are required like of the doctors we have here but some are very logarithmic algorithmic sorry algorithmic decisions which nurses can also take sorry you were saying some somebody was saying something somebody raised a hand here yeah go ahead please yeah my name is mayank i represent uh, seven med india which is a dialysis clinic chain across uh, spread across north india and epitome hospital uh, so uh, uh, taking from uh, what dr harsh said and you know rest of the colleagues said here so one uh, thing uh, which i would also echo with him that the government would push you to bring up certain things uh, in in an environment and in a cost structure which might be viable at one point but pretty soon it goes down the drain so taking uh, example from uh, where you know in the space where we work so dialysis uh, when ayushman bharat started was 2000 rupees and uh, i i was part of the team which was planning the you know uh, thing with the, the you know the commission there niti ayog and uh, we realized okay with this we can actually push the quality standards to a level where most of the patients would get standard uh, treatment with less of infections and lot of other things now it is 1500 and the discussions are to push it down to 1250 just because uh, the aishman budget is uh, majority of it is consumed by renal services so you know why i'm making this point is probably when we are designing uh, the products designing the services uh, like you said we also need a, at a regulatory level we need to see if we can design an ecosystem which yes since uh, india is a progressive country we are still developing pretty fast the ecosystem can remain buoyant and fast changing dynamic but the baseline of the ecosystem should remain and uh, you know uh, what uh, suchita ji said uh, so we could come up with certain things uh, within our you know competitors or peer groups in the industry uh, we uh, met uh, you know and we as competitors or industry players we agreed to certain basic norms that as providers we would stick to three four of the dialysis clinic chains and uh, whatever the cost may be and probably then we can at least standardize the treatment among the you know peer group and the industry it helped tremendously and uh, now we see that you know the patients don't go out of the network they might move within one competitor to the other but that's where slightly probably the collaboration can come in but as an ecosystem needs to be designed uh, accordingly as well so design has to vertically probably i'm not sure i mean both of you said the thing collaboration and ppp for me apart from public private partnership is also about private private partnership you know everyone wants to do liver transplant everyone wants to have a liver accelerator for cancer and then they are fighting each other you know uh, and prices come down and on the ayushman bharat piece yesterday the health minister had a meeting and some of us were there where now they are very conscious of the fact that uh, uh, none of the major hospitals or hospital chains have taken Aishman Bharat or even CGHS for that matter. And he was very frankly asking, what is the reason? And uh, the reason given was one, pricing. Pricing, pricing. I mean, he would have asked 10 times and the answer from different people was the same. So at least 
directly he knows now whatever you know the people in the whole chain may say and unless there is viability in the entire healthcare ecosystem starting from health insurance coming to med tech hospitals diagnostics if we all of them don't have viability then the system is going to collapse and yesterday it was brought out quite clearly in front of the minister and every you know all the uh, officials were there that unless the pricing is improved uh, uh, things are not going to work in fact about 3 4 months ago they have revised the pricing from what it was before for about 5 400 procedures and some of them have been revised upwards 400% which again means that there was no thought that went into what a certain price was for even now the pricing is very less and we hope if the government wants that the healthcare industry doesn't collapse in this country because they say by uh, uh, another 3 years we'll get the missing middle also into this scheme and so everyone will be at a discounted price so how will the system survive currently actually the missing middle or those paying out of pocket are the ones who pay full and they are the ones actually who are subsidizing the cghs echs the government schemes and if they also get taken out uh, and at a better margins as someone Not yesterday me. said very uh, clearly uh, uh, are not more than 10% there may be some exceptions otherwise 10% pat may be 4 or 5% and that is because at least 30 40% people are paying full and, and so what you say is right like, absolutely a friend of mine uh, who's a provider he owns a hospital he told uh, one of the ministers ande khao sir murghi mat maro theek hai aap to reduce hi karte ja rahe ho price <laughs> anyway you were saying something and then you and then abhi kya ho raha hai wo kehte hai murghi jo hai आधी 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 काटो, आधी खाने के लिए, आधी आंडे देने के लिए। लिए। <laughs> और साथ में वो ये कह रहे हैं मुर्गी में सेवा भाव होना चाहिए ठीक है इसे मुर्गी प्रॉफिट का नहीं सोचिए ठीक है और ये जो प्राइसिंग वाली जो बात है एक्चुअली इट इज नॉट प्राइसिंग इट इज एक्चुअली कॉस्टिंग जो कॉस्टिंग नॉर्म्स है उसके ऊपर कॉस्टिंग का तो उन्हें पता ही नहीं है ठीक है और ये देखो कि स्कूल के बच्चे में होगा बेहोश करने में मैं तीन हजार रुपए से ज्यादा लगा देता हूँ इट हेज टू बी अंडर जनरल एनस्थितिया एंड देर इज नो डिफरेंशिएशन क्यों कर रहे हैं क्या ये लॉजिकल लोग हैं 
इनकी सोच अलग है वो सोच के बारे में बात करेंगे अगर आप लोगों में से वो पॉइंट नहीं आया आई जस्ट टेक थर्टी सेकेंड टू सेट यू आर सेंग समथिंग यू आर सेंग समथिंग यू आर सेंग समथिंग आई एम दिनेश पटेल बेसिकली आई एम कॉम्पर्ट सर आई थिंक आई एम ऑड मैन आउट बट आई एम प्रेजेंटली यू विल बी आर मैसेंजर आई टेल यू यू सी आवर कंट्री आई थिंक अ बिग कंट्री एंड द कंट्री इज फॉर्चुनेट टू हैव मेडिकल प्लोरिज्म मेडिकल प्लोरिज्म आई थिंक India has the dubious distinction of having so many systems which are officially recognized for healthcare. Seven systems: the conventional system of medicine, the modern medical system, the Ayurveda, Yoga, Naturopathy, Yunani, Siddha, Homeopathy, and so on. Officially recognized right from independence when we got independent in 1947, and the policies they have been very very inclusive policies supporting the. growth and the development of the system now when we say that our health system if you see our health system it is a integral health system means the conventional medical system is also there and but there are two ecosystems which are growing there are different set of norms for ayush different set of norms for the healthcare system now the three p things three p public not the public private partnership the practitioners the products and the practice of the systems entirely different ecosystem i think if we want to uh, optimize the health services to the people ab dekhi india jo hai india ka india is contributing 20% 1% of the share of the global disease burden india contribute 20%. 11% of the population. 11%. But if you see the disease burden, 21%. Official. In spite of having this medical pluralism, it means some gaps are there. So those gaps can be bridged if we do functional collaboration and functional integration. अब देखिए आयुष की जो इंस्टीट्यूशन अलग काम कर रहे हैं आयुष के प्रैक्टिशनर अलग काम कर रहे हैं आयुष प्रोडक्ट्स जो है मींस दे आर नॉट कंसीडर्ड एज मेडिसिनल प्रोडक्ट्स और अभी देखिए ये जो पेंडेमिक पिछले दो साल में चार साल पहले जो क्या कहते हैं जो ट्रेड था ट्रेड ऑफ आयुष प्रोडक्ट्स दैट वॉज टू दून ऑफ थ्री पॉइंट फाइव बिलियन एंड अभी क्या है एटीन बिलियन एटीन बिलियन means the demand is there for these products but jab aap kehte hain ki ayurvedic medicine when we put the prefix ayurvedic before the medicine no bacteria at all and they think that is the alien product kuch bahar se aa gaya that's ha as a medicine product they were the product it has to be evaluated it has to be on the same way on the same parameters right so if we want to optimize uh, the healthcare and to bridge the gaps i think the collaboration and the integration and that integration not the physical integration physical integration bahut ho gaya hai so the physical integration jo hai 1950 mein jo hai shuru ho gaya tha cghs mein ki under one roof the services of ayurveda services of allopathic system under one roof for functional integration yeah so fund functional integration so you you are saying that the collaboration should be even deeper not only yes. among not only physically with uh, within ourselves with the world mm-hmm. but also within ourselves <coughs> we should we should look at those uh, areas of uh, modalities <coughs> which uh, those modalities which a uh, large portion of the population is going for yes sir yeah. for achieving the health goals yeah. so if we look at bangladesh a oh. few years ago 8 10 years ago 80% of the medicine was indigenous indigenous 20% was allopathic and actually an indian company consulting firm did the whole uh, project to tell them how to integrate the two. Mm. so this integration is a must because un- maybe the ayush doctors can be there at the private phcs chcs 
इवन डिस्ट्रिक्ट हॉस्पिटल सर्जरी भी करते हैं एंड टू इंटीग्रेट द टू सिस्टम बिकॉज देर आर अ फ्यू लैक ऑफ दैम ऑल्सो एंड मल्टीपल हेयर एंड दे आर अवेलेबल ओनली थिंग इज हु आयुष मिनिस्ट्री एंड हेल्थ मिनिस्ट्री टू वर्टिकल टू वर्टिकल पहले इकट्ठे होते थे अब अलग होते थे job licensing norms and migration from one space to another also need to be considered we'll discuss that Thank during sir. train in india yeah please go ahead uh, my name is chandrakant laharia i work with an international organization for 14 years in india africa and geneva and now i have my own uh, startup uh, co-founded something called 1860 health so essentially what i'm hearing from dr mahajan and also him so we are talking till now about the products i am going to talk about services yes, and service integration so one of the key thing is that uh, in india that we keep talking about uh, products so which are important part of service delivery but uh, if if we keep uh, products uh, and there is no demand for those or if we keep high end product and low volume that's not going to work so what should be the focus for uh, high, uh, low uh, cost and high volume rather than high cost and low volume so that is how to be the approach and for that uh, we also need to think in terms of if uh, all of our have a, all of us have a common purpose of improving health of the people then we need to think of those services which people need and uh, we heard a lot of discussion about uh, covid-19 changing the scenario and some of the services like we keep thinking that if people fall sick unfortunately uh, if people fall sick what will be done to them but we should also think of preventive promotive landscape and which is where the integration is brought in but even within preventive promotive and landscape there are two points one there is a need for more healthcare services no whether it's a diagnostic curative or whichever service then which are available in the country but then there are some services which are really lower than the rest of the for example mental health care services we need to think in that direction similarly the elderly care it like a people in adult age group either are covered through some insurance or either social security or government insurance or they can afford but the elderly care mental health care services or school health services those are the services which are not available in fact the entire idea is that we Sorry. need to have those kind of innovations the which makes these services taken to the individual that families just start coming to ask for those services so uh, that's a broader issue that we should not focus on uh, only products so the services also and services for all individual i'll conclude by saying this thing that they are working on some one of the product uh, one of the service related product integration which focus upon school health services not the traditional school health services but something called health promoting schools and traditionally we see that nominal school health services are focus but the idea should be that uh, a package of services for school children which are subscription based for private schools which uh, focus upon school children need or health needs of school children or school going children but also fulfill the health needs of or in overall needs of the school teachers but the family members of those point taken here yeah i am dr somendra shukla i am founder and ceo of india ivf clinic we are a chain of fertility clinic providing ivf service so uh, quickly i will just tell you a very interesting story so there is an international data which tells only 10% of the in- infertile couple really need some uh, medical management or ivf management surgical management to wo wo data aaj tak meri samajh mein nahi aaya covid se pehle tak because jitne bhi ivf centers mein jata tha usually that case rate ya jo ivf rate tha usually it is 50 to 60 so patient infertile patient kisi bhi ivf center mein jate hain usme se 50 ka आई वी एफ हो जाता है बट वो चीज आई केम टू नो आफ्टर द कोविड सो बिफोर फर्स्ट वेव ऑफ कोविड वी हैव गॉट अप्रॉक्सीमेटली हंड्रेड पेशेंट्स ऑन वेटिंग लिस्ट फॉर आई वी एफ इन आवर ओन सेंटर मीन्स करोड़ का एक करोड़ डेढ़ करोड़ से ऊपर हमारे पास बुकिंग थी सो वॉट हैपन आफ्टर फर्स्ट वेव ऑफ कोविड जब फर्स्ट वेव खत्म हुई सेकेंड वेव से जस्ट पहले वी स्टार्टेड कॉलिंग आवर पेशेंट आ जाइए वी हैव अगेन स्टार्टेड बिकॉज आई वी एफ सेंटर गवर्नमेंट डायरेक्टिव के हिसाब से वी हैव टू क्लोज डाउन बिकॉज इट वॉज अ नॉन इमरजेंसी थिंग तो जब हमने कॉल करना शुरू किया तो उसमें से थर्टी परसेंट ने बोला हम तो कंसीव कर गए सो 
दैट वॉज अट वॉज अज फाइनेंशियल ब्लो चालीस पचास लाख तो ऐसे ही चले गए तो तो देन वी हमने लगाया मार्केटिंग वालों को देखो भाई हो क्या रहा कहीं ऐसा तो नहीं वो पड़ोस वाले आई ऑफ सेंटर ले गए सब वो बोल रहे हैं आ जाओ डिस्काउंट दे देंगे बट व्हेन वी स्टार्टेड टॉकिंग टू देम हमारी जो साइकोलॉजिस्ट टीम थी जो हमारी कस्टमर केयर टीम थी दे स्टार्टेड टॉकिंग टू देम सो ईच एंड एवरी अप्रॉक्सीमेटली बीस तीस लोगों से बात किया सबकी एक सेम स्टोरी थी जी लॉकडाउन हो गया था <laughs> तो यहाँ रेंट भरना था और वर्क फ्रॉम हो गया था तो हम अपने गांव चले गए थे गांव में सुबह उठते थे अच्छा खाना मिलता था कोई स्ट्रेस नहीं था वर्क फ्रॉम होम तो ऐसे ही होता है करो ना करो शाम को रिपोर्ट देनी होती है <laughs> तो ऑटोमेटिकली हम कंसीव हो गए सो देयर वाज अ फाइनेंशियल लॉस बट इट इट गेव अस अ वेरी गुड लर्निंग इट वाज अ ह्यूज लर्निंग फॉर अस उस लर्निंग को लेकर व्हाट आई हैव स्टार्टेड अ न्यू स्टार्टअप कॉल्ड एस फ्लर्टिलिटी Which is a 360 degree holistic end to end. Flirtility. Flirtility. That means flirt, flirty with your fertility. आपको लगा आप लोग आपको लगा कि डॉक्टर की दुकान बंद हो सकती है तो ये वाला शुरू कर दिया. नहीं ये जो कह रहे हैं बिल्कुल ठीक कह रहे हैं. अभी देखिए कोविड में क्या हुआ? जहाँ पे मैं काम करता हूँ. First floor पे जो है there is a allopathic. डिस्पेंसरी सी डी एच एस का और सेकेंड फ्लोर पर जो है आयुर्वेदिक सो आई सेट इन द सेकेंड फ्लोर कोविड वैक्सीन के बाद जो है कहीं को क्या हुआ है वो स्लीपलेसनेस मसल पेन डायरिया इवन हाइपरग्लाइसीमिया एंड दीज सिम्टम्स दे वर नॉट रिस्पॉन्डिंग टू द कन्वेंशनल मेडिसिन इवन द हाइपरग्लाइसीमिया वो उनको जो है ग्लाइब इंक्लोमेट शुरू की कहीं वो मेट अब क्या हुआ उसके बाद जो है उन्होंने नीचे जो है कहने शुरू कर दिया साफ ने आप ऐसे करो ऊपर ही चले जो आयुर्वेदिक और हमारे वहाँ पर आने शुरू हुए तो क्या कहते मतलब उनका हाइप्रोगाइसिन भी कम हो गया उनकी वो जो स्लीपलेसनेस थी वो भी ठीक होगी सब कुछ ठीक हो हमने तो सिर्फ यही बताया हेल्थ गाइडलाइंस कि क्या खाना क्या नहीं खाना अब मैं एक आपको बड़ी सिंपल सी एग्जाम्पल देता हूँ वो उससे जो है आपको कई बातें समझ आएगी अबाउट हेल्थ केयर आयुर्वेद सेज दैट कर्ड शुड नॉट बी टेकन डेली it should never be taken in the night hmm. and cut should never be taken alone okay. and there are certain material which have to be added to cut in different seasons ve garmiyon mein agar lena hai to kaise lena hai sardi mein lena hai to kaise lena hai agar kya kit spring season mein kaise lena hai aaj se jo hai lagbhag koi 10 saal pehle ki baat hai aims mein conference thi in the department of reproductive biology dr sunita thi wahan pe us waqt head of the department to during uh, लंच ब्रेक जो है तो ऐसी बात होती है डॉक्टर सुनीता ये क्या कहते हैं हमारे यहाँ पे ट्रेडिशन है हमारी मतलब इंडियन सोसाइटी में कि जो मैंस्ट्रेटिंग लेडीज हैं उनको कहते हैं कि आप जो है खट्टी चीज़ें मत खाओ कहते हैं तो इसके बारे में मतलब कहते नहीं मैंने कहा हमारे तो आयुर्वेद में लिखा हुआ है कि मतलब पॉसिबल ही मैंने कहा इससे जो है मुझे लगता है कि जो वजाइनल पीएच है उसमें फ़र्क पड़ता होगा तो ठीक है कहते मैं कुछ कर उन्होंने एक स्टडी की स्टडी की उन्होंने ये देखा कि जो गर्ल्स या लेडीज़ जो है वो जो दही खट्टी चीज़ें या ज़्यादा वो खाती थी मछली पर तो उनका जो वजाइनल पी एच था डेट वॉज डिफरेंट डेट वॉज एसिडिक ठीक है नॉर्मली जो है और वहाँ पे क्या है कि वो जो है जो वेजाइनल इन्फेक्शन थी वो ज़्यादा थे ऐसे केसेस में नॉन स्पेसिफिक रिपोर्ट सेकेंड थिंग कि वी स्टार्टेड दिस फर्टिलिटी सो इट इज़ अ वन स्टॉप सॉल्यूशन फॉर ऑल द थिंग मीन्स इट इज इट इज जस्ट लाइक एन अमेजॉन फॉर फर्टिलिटी क्या प्रोवाइड करते हैं आप या सर आप नाम लो वो है I won't tell dogs of the wife. नहीं नहीं सर बिल्कुल highest level of data privacy is there. Don't worry. और packing भी आपके घर ऐसे ही आएगी कि लगेगा कि कोई research general आप आपने मंगाई है. 
उसमें क्या है सर देर आर ऑल सॉर्ट ऑफ कंसल्टेशन एलोपैथिक तो है ही आयुर्वेदिक होलिस्टिक ईच एंड एवरी थिंग एंड वी आर सेलिंग न्यूट्रासोटिकल हेल्थ सप्लीमेंट्स ईच एंड एवरी थिंग बट अब क्वेश्चन क्या है वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट कि कैसे मेड इन इंडिया करें इंडिजिनस करें बट अंटिल एंड अनलेस वी आर नॉट गोइंग टू चेंज अवर माइंड सेट अभी नोन क्या देर आर टू पैरल सिस्टम आयुष और ये अभी देखिए पेशेंट क्या है देर इज लॉट ऑफ विंडो शॉपिंग जो हमारे पास आ रहे हैं हमारे पोर्टल में आ रहे हैं वो कल को दूसरी जगह भी जा रहे हैं सो वॉट इज हैपनिंग एक इंडियन माइंड सेट है कि दिस इज सम वॉट लाइक अ क्वैकरी फॉर सम हेल्थ केयर प्रोफेशनल आयुष इज अ क्वैकरी स्टिल इट इज अ क्वैकरी बट वॉट वी हैव सीन बिगेस्ट एग्जाम्पल मैंने आपको दिया क्यों कोविड में एक महीने जाकर कैसे हो गए बहुत सही पॉइंट है आपका आई थिंक यू हैव रियली लाइट एंड ऑफ द एटमोसफियर थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर दैट एंड दिस कैन बी अ सेपरेट डिस्कशन फॉर ऑल ऑफ अस दैट वेदर द ऑल्टरनेटिव सिस्टम्स ऑफ मेडिसिन आर दे वैलिडेटेड व्हाट दे रिक्वायर एटसेट्रा कमिंग टू द सेकंड पार्ट ऑफ द डायलॉग वी हैव डिस्कस्ड design in india Sir, and in india me. also we discussed Sir, just before i would want to add a very valid point here uh in bhutan where they measure the gross happiness index and not the gdp uh, we as a international medical tourism company we are a digital provider of patient acquisition and retention we don't get fertility patients don't get fertility so it's fertility is just to do about stress so to add to your product you know uh, nutraceuticals blah 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 <coughs> the big question you should answer is how would you handle stress because once they are at home in their village the stress is gone so the biggest thing in fertility is just the stress actually there are studies which are not validated but they are very strongly pointing out to the fact that the maximum disease burden is in those countries the where the doctors are maximum or medics or यूरोपियन and treated patient is the same because iatrogenic disease the disease which is given by the medical fraternity whether nurse doctor or whatever is so high that we lose a lot of patients because of that so uh, but this is on a lighter note uh, the without doctors there is no life you know doctors are life givers lo kehte hain dawn ho ya dar hoga doctor ke samne sab jo saath hai so uh, coming to coming to this the second part of the discussion which is train in india now train in india is as uh, one of you said that india accounts for 21% of global disease burden but only 6% of hospital beds and 8% of doctors and nurses so there is a huge gap and this gap is because of economic reasons because of social reasons because there is a pecking order where nurses for example nursing is not considered a very good profession here because there is sociological taboo against it that they spend time with men uh, at late uh, you know at uh, ungodly hours or they have to come in touch with the feces and other fluids of uh, people of patients then 50% of nurses are unemployed i'm just giving you a context so that the discussion can begin as i told you social packing order is there at the same time 50% of or 30 24% of foreign workforce in healthcare all over the world is from india so the one side there is lot of motion happening at the other side there is lot of uh, dearth and also dearth of quality at several places so this is what i would like to say and now i would like to uh, open up the discussion for train in india anybody would like to start yeah so i'll start this okay. because 
you know, I have been interacting with a lot of health ministers from the underserved countries uh, all across Africa, Central Asia and uh, Middle East, which are rich countries. And, uh, you know, a lot of our Indian doctors have been going there, setting up liver transplant units and which is the most advanced uh, quaternary care. Uh, so, Omar, Dr. Rail has done that already. A lot of such examples. Now, their aspiration is to be India. You might beat a bro around India, we're sitting here, apne ghar ka saman sabko, you know, the grass is always greener on the other side, blah, blah, blah. And you look at US now, where you also work, and in most parts of Europe. So a lot of US citizens end up going to Mexico and Costa Rica. A lot of Eastern Europe people go, end up going to Turkey and so on and so forth. Uh, we get a lot of demand from Germany for nurses, for example. And uh, we're talking to a nursing college where they're saying uh, 200 nurses in a quarter right now. So 800 nurses in a year just for Germany. They just, uh, what they need is trained nurse along with German language, uh, B grade, whatever they call it as a certification. So there's a whole lot of brain drain, like you said, the Middle East is all full of Indian nurses. Anywhere you go, there's Indian doctors, your Indian medical colleges are setting up, uh, you know, uh, uh, colleges in, you know, Africa and Central Asia. You've seen, you know, Dr. Maipal's, you know, Dr. Harsh Mahajan's, you know, colleagues go to US and Europe and everywhere. The very fact that Indians are respected because everywhere in, on the high street in UK, to US, to tertiary quaternary care, doctors in US, they're all, you know, 30, 40, 50 percent Indians there. So all that is happening. But if you look at training part now, which just as now started, you know, you might say, look, you know, there's no enough training happening. But you look at uh, a big 500 plus bed hospital in Delhi versus in Ludhiana. I was sitting with a urologist there in Ludhiana and I asked him, uh, what do you do in urology? He said, well, what do you mean? I said, you do prostate cancer, you know, how do you work? And you, or do you everything? He said, what, everything? I said, prostate cancer? Said, yes. I said, do you work on Da Vinci? He looked at me like this, you know, do you use a robotic Da Vinci? He said, so other friend who was sitting, who was an anesthetist, who was my school classmate, Right, so this uh, urologist now says, Kana bhai sahab, this ko Da Vinci ka attitude hai na, wo Dili jata hai. Wo lo dhyana nahi rahega. So, you have doctors, you have trained people, but people who are looking for excellence versus if you look at tier 2, tier 3 cities, you know, you are, here you have a margin diagnostic, <coughs> the value system is driven, and it is being passed on. So you have a Vidur who is maybe carrying on or maybe a Ritika who is carrying on, you know, the legacy. So there's a continuum of, you know, excellence which has been driven down into the organization in tier one city, which is really what is we are able to compete with the best, you know, uh, IUL lens. So the scale is there. Everything is there. Vertical integration is required. We need to compete with China or US, whatever. But the training, uh, enough number of doctors or nurses for excellence is just a metro phenomenon. Is not happening at tier two, tier three. The aspirations are missing because of the lack of competition. Uh, you have more dentists. People are still not the patients. I mean, are still not wanting to get a dental treatment done. Uh, they would still want a the tooth to be taken out, they don't want RCT done, uh, the patient education is required, doctors are being trained, you know, the, the thanks to the cost, you know, all we, all of us say that cost is not going to be down, but then we end up charging a crore rupees for MBBS seat. All these low cost advantages are because of your aims and Savdarjangs and government medical college, Patiala, you know, all those government seats where the doctors virtually passed out free of cost. So, great point. So, basically you're saying that the spectrum of expertise is very wide. Yeah. Maybe in tier 1 cities it is very high and tier 3 or tier 4 it is very low. Great point. 
I would like to focus on the median. That as a median, healthcare worker, nurse, or even doctor, there are three skills I think which we, which any training imparts. One is cognitive skill, which is literacy, numeracy, analytic. Second is technical and vocational skills, which is tools and methods. And third is social and behavioral skills, the way to interact, what we were talking in the morning. So I would like you to tell us, the group to tell us, as to how are we doing on training of our healthcare worker in cognitive, technical and vocational and social and behavioral skills. How are we doing? Okay. ये इस वक्त इंडिया में जो इंटीग्रेशन है, some sort of integration has taken place on the Ayush side. अब if you see the Ayush course curricula, 40 to 50 percent of the material that is from the modern side, anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, pathology, but not even a bit of it. Of Ayush is there in the medical course. The medical students, they do not know what Ayush is about. They do not know. When they do not know, then how they will apply, how they will guide the patients. So, with the width of curriculum. Haan, curriculum. Curriculum so, should be widened. Haan, Good point. So, training modules as well as the medical education course curriculum, those should be integrated. Integrated. And the focus should be on holistic healthcare. Not the fragmented health care or medical care. Holistic health care. Now, give example of yoga. Now, yoga ke liye jo hai, the whole world is coming to India. And the yoga has been incorporated in the treatment protocols, even in the US. So, yeah, hacking globalization of the local technologies that is important. So the curricula, curriculum needs to be ah, widened, widened towards Ayush. Ah. There are certain new modalities which are coming in treatment. Treat. For example, ah. telemedicine is coming. And John Hopkins uh, University has included in its curriculum the way to visit a doctor, uh, for a doctor to vis visit the patient digitally. This is the way to visit. So I think all those things uh, should widen our cur curriculum and change our pedagogy. Going. So, Coming to training, you know, if I if I have to just give you an example of a phlebotomist who is supposed to collect blood sample of a patient. Generally, patient when they have to go for a blood test, most of the people are not very comfortable to get pricked and they are always worried and scared. If I teach phlebotomists only to do good blood collection, it is not enough. Because patient nowadays is looking for a good experience overall. It is not that, you know, you sit, sit on the chair, hath aise karo, Patti lagaya and just collect monotonous, no dialogue, nothing. That is not a good experience. But a patient who, with whom the phlebotomist has been engaging, continuously talking and collecting blood as one of the action, then the experience is very good. So my training program to phlebotomist, because for patient, I think phlebotomy is a touch point for the patient. I mean, it is not what tests I do backhand and all that. So creating that good experience of phlebotomy, this is not taught in schools and um, uh, paramedical schools and all that. This is what makes the difference for me. So this is what I would say and the same way, you know, then I can come to doctors and all front end people. Excellent point. Phlebotomist, first of all, is a great designation. When we call the patient, the healthcare worker, patient attendant, he doesn't like it. If we call him geriatric uh, uh, support, he likes it. Phlebotomist is a great designation, first of all. Secondly, the point which you are making is that he should know more. He should know how to engage with the patient so as to make the experience good. And I am reminded that there is a study recently which has come that patient or memory has a recency effect. So if you are gone, you've gone into the patient with an endoscope and somehow it has moved and you're about to take it out and it has moved to hurt him, hold it now, hold it there. Don't take it out yet. Because last moment when you're take, 
wait for 2 3 4 5, five minutes then take it out then he will not associate the endoscope with pain otherwise as you are exiting and just before that you have hurt him he will associate your endoscopy and your skill with pain giving uh, you know characteristic so great points this is the level we should we should uh, train so our phlebotomists go ahead so i am dr gautam bankre i am the director of my lab discovery and when when we come to training we had a peculiar problem in the initial part of the covid pandemic so we are into manufacturing of molecular diagnostic kits so we were the first one to covid the biggest problem that we faced was not the supply of the kits or the instruments it was trained technicians to carry out covid pcr tests we had like labs calling us day in day out ki we have the kits but how do we run it so i think and within a year we have maybe thousands of technicians who are now well trained in real time pcr or pcr testing in fact now it's the reverse thing happening we get calls and messages that do you have a job opportunity so in one year's time 20 months time we were able to train so many technicians on a completely new technology which was considered to be you know out there alien and you know too cutting edge to be impl- implemented in india so what we learned in this last one the like two years is that it's easy to train the number because we have the now we have the the right it you know power and we can reach out to so many people and train technicians it's the intent behind it if you want to train real time pcr had been in india for last 20 years but we did not have any technicians the moment demand came in so many people got trained so it's a balance of demand and there has to be an intent from manufacturers from academy bodies from government to ensure that these people are trained and ready in case of a calamity not wait for the calamity and then train them did the government sector skill council also help you i would not say very openly yes they were doing it in their own centers but it was mainly down to the manufacturers i mean in, even in peak lab lockdown we we were traveling and training the time okay there were some other hands up yeah right so uh, along with phlebotomy i have personally had so many experiences with phlebotomists so in our own company where they've come to pick up my sample where in having a conversation with them i realized that okay maybe this is not the best test and this is a, a different test that i can do uh we with this insight and with a lot of customer feedback we've really invested in training our customer care teams to be able to have these very deep conversations with uh, people calling in where they're able to advise them based on past reports that are there that okay no this may not be the best test and maybe you should consider this test alternatively and this level of skill you can see a uh, a uh, 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 as of right now this is an internal training program that we have to do and yeah. anyone that we hire does not come with this skill set to be able to like guide patients through like a, a journey of what test to do how do you understand that report better now what do you do next after that and that's really gives a holistic approach to both diagnostics and also what they need to do next let's come to that rule so the top is had a combination of skill to do perfection good communication engaging skill yeah. knowledge very important if they do not know the test and background around it person perceives that person is coming for my test he doesn't know anything so lab is bad so you know all this three combination along with soft skill can actually give good impact and confidence so, so i don't know one really to that sir sorry i'm uh, interrupting so i don't know how, how many of us have given lab here to work in the uk so it's the professional qualifying exam to work in the uk so phlebotomy is one of the stations over there and they they check when you're going to the patient you have to talk to the patient and you tell them a minor scratch coming your way just hold on when we were in medical college it was not like that patient pakda lag diya acha agar hua to theek hai nahi to ek aur sui laga do gmc mein hi hota hai so talking to a patient was never a part of a training dnv we have clear dnv so dnv mein also there are oski stations to ek jaise blood sampling ka station hai so there are each and everything is objective एग्जामिनर के पास एक 20 चीज की लिस्ट होती है यू रीच द पेशेंट यू ग्रीट द पेशेंट यू आस्क परमिशन टू सिट डाउन हर एक का एक एक मार्क्स होता है अगर आपने ग्रीट नहीं किया वन पेज वन मार्क्स आपका कट गया तो वो 20 चीजें आप पूरा करोगे तब एंड दे आर वेरी स्मॉल उसमें क्लिनिकल दो या तीन ही चीजें होती है बट मेजोरिटी ऑफ देम आर नॉन क्लिनिकल थिंग्स हाउ टू बिल्ड अ रैपो विद पेशेंट यू हैव एक्सप्लेन द पेशेंट दी ऑल दीज थिंग्स एंड समटाइम्स व्हाट हैपेन this phlebotomy experience is the uh, phlebotomist are the first point of contact so kabhi kabhi kya hota hai ki hospital ka pura impression hi kharab ho jata hai and at times the only point of contact yes yeah bachpan se 
because I remember one new, uh, pediatric hospital, uh, there was a balloon wala standing in front of the pediatric hospital selling balloons. So I asked the owner of the hospital that a, this guy standing, he's doing brisk business, very uh, yeah. He says, yeah, everybody, every child who comes, you know, the moment he sees my hospital, he starts crying because the, the injection is coming, <laughs> and he's giving a balloon to, for the for the mothers to pacify the child. <laughs> So, you know, we, uh, apart from a routine lab, we have the genome of sequencing. Course. You have an integrated yeah. set setup now. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, counseling for tests before actually doing the test, because here it could be for cancer and you are saying your, you know, probability of having cancer may be 60%, 70%. So, you know, that is also very much a part that you have to explain to the patient beforehand as to what is the importance and how would you perceive it if you got a positive test and then the patient may, or this is a person really where you are predicting the percentage uh, the probability of your having cancer one may decide no I don't want to know and someone else may say Mera 20% bhi hoga, to I want to know so that is also a very important part I'd like of to counseling. add to that. Like, so our genetic counselors are uh, in talking to them. I, they say that most of the time that they spend is actually on the emotional and psychological uh, aspects of these uh, conversations, and very less is actually about the clinical. Right. Yeah, in fact, in hospitals, you are taught that when you are briefing the patient, you should not raise his expectation that you are now going to be all right. Otherwise, so as you are saying it. You should weigh your words and articulate them in a manner so that you keep him exposed to some level of risk also, which is always present. Go ahead, sorry. But coming to the positive aspect of it, I think 10 years back or a decade back, we were actually discussing about availability of flavors. I think we should be very, we are blessed primarily too, we are talking about the flavors, having a skill of better communication. So I think that the first level has been pretty well, pretty well met. Like right now, if I need a flavor, I just call and I have a flavor at home. I think that's a marvelous achievement what India has done. A friend of mine is in Canada. He wanted to get a ear infection appointment. He has to wait for one and a half month. Yeah. But yeah. in India, if we need to get this done, I just call and they'll go. Or I can have a telehealth. I mean, that's, there is no match done. Coming to the training part of it, I agree. <coughs> I think the first, the internal part of the organizations, which is like a diagnosis or the hospitals, nurses, I think that that is a part I think India has taken to the next level. We have amazing training schools. On availability, we have a people. I mean, if I need 10 flippers, I can get it. If we need 50 nurses, we can get it. But in the value chain, the rate at which we are moving as in India, you now we are talking about the consumer and the patient behavior. Because that's where the competition is moving on. And I think what we are discussing today, we are not discussing the dirt of the skill but a better training and the better presentation in front of our customers. We are the best. I think primarily we are looking at the best as the benchmarks and we are trying to create it here. Excellent. Now coming to the, even like a niche what we do. I mean, we just, we don't do any biochemical test. We do only DNA. So my starting material is always DNA. Today if I post, I get 50 resumes within two days. So that, that level, I think India has done an amazing job. We also get resumes of PhDs who are actually done in US and UK, I want to come back and apply for the job. Excellent. But the second part, which is there with Dr. Mahajan and uh, my colleague mentioning, the genetic counselors providing the, the communication skills, cognitive and the behavioral aspect and emotional managing of the patient is something we still, because I think traditionally we don't have those guidelines. It is not been taught in the MBBS college. So that is that is the area which we still have to do it. But I think that is a we are managing a better problem. So I think we are not really hassled around it. No, excellent point. You are, you are basically saying the problems which we have are of sophistication. We already have the technical and vocational skills to a basic level. What we re may require are better cognitive skills like literacy, numeracy, numeracy analytical, excel, etc. And little social and behavioral skills. And this is a very good point for me to segue into the next area. Uh, which is the heel in India piece because today the demand for Indian doctors and Indian healthcare worker is huge. To this year you will be surprised to know, oh, maybe you all know, 
300,000 is the export number. Today, the Indian doctor is internationally mobile. Not only internationally mobile, internationally venerated because of the level of skill which he has brought in. And healthcare worker is also arriving. I hope with the with the greater development in the cognitive and social and behavioral side, it will happen. Also, we should have a credit program which allows them to continue uh, like a ladder their education which they have taken place by globally harmonizing our curricula. So the last point which I come to regarding this program is Heal in India piece. We need to empower our paramedics. Some doctor say that I want to empower the nurses. But when I empower the nurses, I say, aap lead lo. Wo kehti hai, nahi nahi doctor, aap, aap hi aage hai. So this kind of cultural, <coughs> let me say cultural inertia, how do we handle? Because most of the people who are in the paramedic side, they are either <coughs> burdened by force of history or how they are supposed to so they don't take initiative. What is your take on this? Because some doctors like you have told me that I have surgery to seekhi, Dr. Mahipal. But I have learned healing from the nurses. Se hai. Nurses heal kar rahi hai. So, Dekhye, We cannot have a consultant less than MD, a nurse less than DNB, oh sorry, or a PSC or GNM. But when it comes to allied healthcare workforce, we are absolutely not bothered. You see, patient safety may nurse chai pini gari hai, ulalke gulli gara dekhlena, monitor ko, oxygen monitor ko dekhlena, ye go. Kai kaam usko deke chali jati hai. Without we realizing that he or she also has to be equally certified because he also has a role in the patient safety. So, this is one aspect. So, mujhe yaad hai ke jabi yavishman bharat ban raha tha. कोई करता तीन लाख की आएगी कोई करता एक लाख रुपए आएगा एंड सडनली व्हेन वी नो द 5 लाख यू नो पीपल वर वेरी सरप्राइज दैट 5 लाख इज टू मच फॉर कंट्री लाइक इंडिया बट एनीवे तो समय डायरेक्टर जनरल हेल्थ मैं उनका नाम नहीं ले रहा हूं महाजन वगैरह सब जानते हैं उनको ये काम दिया गया कि भाई आप रेट्स बना के तैयार रखो मोदी साहब कभी भी अनाउंस करने वाले हैं दिस इज द मंथ ऑफ इफ आई रिमेंबर मार्च 2018 वो सिग्नल वेंट अराउंड तो उस समय हमारे जो डायरेक्टर जनरल हेल्थ थे 25 मार्च को जो है अनाउंस हुआ जी डायरेक्टर जनरल हेल्थ जो थे वो भी खैर ऑफिशियलिंग थे उस समय खैर उनको काम दिया गया ही डिड अ गुड जॉब लेट मी आल्सो टेल यू ही वर्कड आउट कभी मैं माजन से डिस्कस अलग से करूंगा इस बारे में यू नो ही वर्कड आउट द कॉस्टिंग प्राइसिंग वो करके पोथा बनाया बिकॉज़ कभी भी अनाउंस हो सकता है सो नाउ एक्सीडेंटली नाउ ये आपको मैं थोड़ा सा सीक्रेट है लेकिन बहुत पुरानी बात है नाउ इट इज नो मोर अ सीक्रेट तो वो लिफ्ट में जा रहे थे और उनको सेक्रेटरी साहब मिल गए क्या हर रहा भाई तो ये रेट्स बनाए हैं इस क्वेश्चन ये नो क्यूरियसली दिखाया क्या रेट्स है हैं व्हाट इज दिस सम ऑफ रेट्स आर मोर देन सीजीएचएस दिस इज अ स्कीम फॉर द पुअर पीपल नाउ यू सी हमारे कंट्री में ये है कि अगर आप पुअर पीपल के लिए बना रहे हैं तो कॉस्ट हैज टू बी लो क्वालिटी हैज टू बी नॉट बॉदर्ड आई मीन यू सी I tell you, when we launched NABH in 2006, so a Amarjit Singh the health commissioner Gujarat. He called me. Doctor Bhatia ke saath main to nom gaye udhar. Kehte bhai ye accreditation aapne banana hai. Ye to corporate ke liye hai, government ke liye bata raha hai. Bahut mushkil hai. But I am determined. Why can't a government district hospital do it? So please come and explain to us. So unke jo CMO bate hue the. एक दो ने कहा साहब कि व्हाई आर यू टॉकिंग ऑफ क्वालिटी इन ए गवर्नमेंट हॉस्पिटल बिकॉज़ वी आर गिविंग फ्री ट्रीटमेंट सो ये हमारी माइंडसेट है इफ यू आर गिविंग फ्री ट्रीटमेंट व्हाई द हेल यू आर आस्किंग फॉर द क्वालिटी सो ये जो बैकग्राउंड है ना कंट्री का तो एनीवे मोदी साहब ने जो ये लॉन्च किया था लेट मी टेल यू नाउ वेरी क्लियरली वो विथ नो प्रिपरेशन लेकिन ये भी एक तरीका होता है लॉन्च तो कर दो अपने आप वो बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक बनते जाएंगे सो इट इज वेयर दैट इज वेयर वी आर यू नो यस्टरडे इन फैक्ट आई एम वेरी हैप्पी ही विल आल्सो एग्री विद मी दैट वी फाउंड मिनिस्टर वेरी प्रोफेशनल पॉलिटिशियन तो है ही लेकिन ही वाज आल्सो गुड एडमिनिस्ट्रेटर टॉकिंग एंड इफ द व्हाटएवर ही टॉक ही गॉट रियलाइजेशन 
इलेक्शन एजेंडा इन दिस कंट्री एंड इफ यू वॉन्ट टू आस्क मी हु इज द फर्स्ट मैन हुडा इज राज शेखर रेड्डी राज शेखर रेड्डी इन आंध्रा वॉज द फर्स्ट पर्सन टू लॉन्च आरोग्य श्री एंड ई वन द इलेक्शन ऑल्सो बिकॉज ऑफ दैट अब क्या है धीरे धीरे इलेक्शन एजेंडा बन गया है यू नो ये भी सौ राजस्थान गवर्नमेंट दस लाख की स्कीम कर दी उसने आई डोंट एनी वो अलग बात है सो दिस इज नॉट बिकमिंग ए इलेक्शन एजेंडा एंड द गवर्नमेंट विल बी फोकस्ड ऑन प्रोवाइडिंग दी हेल्थ केयर सो नीड अब जनरेट हो रही है बिकॉज अदरवाइज यू नो वाट डॉक्टर महाजन महिपाल कहा आपने देखिए स्पेस में वी आर ऑलमोस्ट लीडर इन द वर्ल्ड मार्स में भेज दे रहा है सेटेलाइट ओनली टू कंट्रीज हैव डन इट आई टी वी आर दर्ल्ड लीडर्स आई मीन आप देखिए कि मिसाइल टेक्नोलॉजी ना वी आर ऑलमोस्ट देयर आई मीन नो बडी कैन सो दैट मीन वी नो बडी कैन से हमारे अंदर कैपेबिलिटी नहीं है बट बिकॉज देर वॉज नो नीड नो पॉलिसी नो प्रायोरिटी द हेल्थ केयर एज सफर्ड सो नाउ कमिंग टू योर पॉइंट हीलिंग एंड ट्रेनिंग सो एक और मैं आपको बताऊंगा ये बहुत सब डिस्कशन होता रहा है कि शॉर्टेज ऑफ डॉक्टर्स की जो हम बात करते हैं आप ये देखिए कि इफ यू गो बैक बाई जस्ट फोर ईयर्स बिहार हैड थर्टीन मेडिकल कॉलेजेस ओनली थर्टीन एंड दैट टाइम तमिलनाडु हैड फोर्टी नाइन मेडिकल कॉलेज अब तो घर वहाँ फिफ्टी सिक्स हो गए शायद साउथ इंडिया दे हैड ए इनोवेटिव आइडिया mostly political people they established the medical colleges for 25 acres tak bhi tha na requirement wo unhone gaon mein zameen le li sare medical college dekhi gaon mein bane hain politically they were appreciated that you are setting up medical college in a village but this was a blunder you can set up the hospital in the village but not the medical college because medical college you need number of patients you need super specialist teachers which you not get the that is where you know the training of our doctors gradually has suffered one about nurses what you said hamari nurses aaj se agar ab main 15 saal pehle jaau thoda sa andaza main laga raha hu were in demand number 1 even in usa uske baad filipino nurses aa gayi kya thi unke andar khas baat simply what you said soft skills so they trained them on the soft skill and our indian nurses fall back to abhi jo hai hamare yahan aapne kaha ke nurses ki unemployment hai but at the same time vacancies bhi padi hui hai we are we have shortage of the nurses to yahan pe jo sawal aa raha hai wo hai esteem ka aap dekhiye rajasthan mein nurse ko aaj hum 12000 salary dete hain usi hospital mein driver ki salary jo hai wo 17000 hai ये मैं फिगर आप कल तो थोड़े दिन का बता रहा हूँ ना वो बीएससी कर रही है ट्वेल्व प्लस टू प्लस फोर इयर्स एंड उसको आप बारह हज़ार दे रहे हो उसकी एस्टीम कहाँ है ना व्हाट काइंड ऑफ यू नो केयर शी विल बी प्रोवाइडिंग लेकिन ऑन द अदर हैंड हॉस्पिटल की इकोनॉमिक्स इतनी ख़राब है इस समय कि इफ़ यू टेल दम नहीं भाई नर्स को कम से कम बीस तो दो वो बेचारा वो नहीं कर पा रहा है बिकॉज ऑफ अगेन दिस गवर्नमेंट पॉलिसीज तो अभी फाइनली बात मैं आपको ये कहूँगा कि बिकॉज नाव हेल्थ केयर हैज कम ऑन दी होराइजन और रिडार ऑफ दी गवर्नमेंट उनके पास हॉस्पिटल नहीं है सो दे आर डिपेंडेंट ऑन दी प्राइवेट सेक्टर एंड दे वॉन्ट टू बाई सर्विसेज फ्रॉम यू गुड आइडिया इट इज़ गुड पी 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 बट उनके पास क्योंकि पैसा नहीं है एंड दे डू नॉट हैव रैशनैलिटी ऑफ हाउ टू फिक्स दी कॉस्टिंग तो हैफेजली काम चल रहा है तो दिस इज दिचुएशन टूडे but i tell you with the yesterday's discussion i think sooner or later government has to realize that private sector has to be our partner without that it not survive kyunki 85% tertiary care is being provided by the private sector let it be very clear so i think a balancing hoga apne aap correction aayega we may be late and finally jo allied healthcare workforce hai india could have supplied even now there is a chance to the entire world आप अनएम्प्लॉयमेंट आपके खत्म कर सकते हैं इफ यू रियली सेटअप दिस बिकॉज अभी क्या हो रहा है 
माजन साहब एक तरह से ट्रेन कर रहे हैं आप ट्रेन कर रहे हैं लाइट मैं कर रहा हूँ सब कर रहे हैं कोई वो यूनिफॉर्मिटी नहीं है तो वर्ल्ड में अगर आपने भेजना है इट हैज टू बी है कॉमन स्टेम इंडिया एंड देन यू विल फील सो आई थिंक वी आर अप्रोचिंग दे अप्रोचिंग बट वी हैव कैपेबिलिटी इंटेंशन एक बार आ जाए वहाँ से गवर्नमेंट जो जो कि शायद आना शुरू हुआ वी विल बी especially paramedics nurses that it's supposed to be a charitable activity you know csr funds are deploy kariye and you will be surprised that healthcare providers cannot deploy their csr funds for training healthcare workers aapko kahi bathroom banana padega kahi aapko educate kisi ko karna hoga aap apne field mein nahi kar sakte and yes they this has also been brought up and hopefully this will change because we are best at doing what we do in our own field and this is coming from dr harsh majan who was heading nat health a very powerful gathering like hbi of providers and we tried their pride out their best so i think we are just about to close this we will of course take last comments but the point which dr gyani made is very right and i here here is where i would like to share what does the government think what does modi ji think and i had the opportunity he invited me to his home so of understanding a little bit the man their whole government thinks that seva bhav ke sath health care mein aana zaruri hai aur iska itihas hai they say that health care hospitals hospital care in ancient india was all free and we agree with that hospitals were provided and they were free they were provided by businessmen only the businessmen pulled in their profits excess profits and started hospitals in their cities so however what they miss and i have told that to them and please join my voice because your voice is much bigger than my alone that it is true that hospital started like that and even in the modern tradition it was considered poor and negative to take money from a patient but that time hospital as a business had not started other businessmen who were successful were investing in healthcare now these people have invested in healthcare and healthcare is their only business if they will not do well how will they continue to do good in healthcare you can do good and do well seva bhav as well as thoda sa profit you cannot feed from an empty vessel is the dive is the is the point which should go through to the government and i'm i'm sure they will listen to us because if they do not listen to us the quality of healthcare in india will keep on going down and the affluent people you see what happened in afghanistan afghanistan they brought in this price control and affluent people started moving their service they started going or traveling abroad because slowly the quality of healthcare went down so this is the point which i would like to just table here before we come to our last comments there were a couple of hands up if you can just make your comment in one minute each dr sachit and uh, dr somit so we have to come across one government scheme which as a hospital owner i find uh, supportive at least if not very favorable in delhi government has dak scheme so no hospital in delhi is now ready to take trauma patients because we are not made the proper payment too late too little and the onus is on us as if we did the accident CGHS and even private insurance. So we were hoping CGHS would move the private insurance way and do better, but now we have to fight with insurance companies. It's a smaller hospital to get the proper prices. So there's a something called subdural hematoma. You have a head injury, 80% mortality. If you're treated in time with lot of effort, you can be saved. The package offered was 85,000 rupees for seven days of treatment, and I never go into that detail. But that I saw that price, and I went to the insurance company. forum of oriental national everything i gave them a step by step breakdown of the cost my cost if i bring 10000 cases a year the minimum possible cost with no doctor fees and no manpower cost included the cost is coming to 1 lakh 90000 rupees 
and they were offering 85,000 and after that 2, 3, 4 meetings they raised it to 1 lakh 40,000 rupees, still not enough. So hospital owners are support are presumed to be cash cows, leeches, whereas the COVID, the count of 5 million or whatever would have been 25 million if the private would not have stepped in. And that also government does only knee jerk and it's anti-innovation, so anti-entrepreneurship. We have to move out, everybody is moving out. I am moving out of India, starting a center abroad because this country is not supported. And we don't have that incubator for such things. And we cannot dare to be vocal nowadays. Or in 1376, the mayor of uh, London, he wrote to the hospitals saying, reduce your prices, don't give it to the highest bidder. So we hospitals have been under attack for a very, very long time. But the kind of attack, as you mentioned, which is coming right now, is is uh, asphyxiating hospitals in such a manner that they might not be viable. Sorry. One or two quick points. Uh, one on seva bhav. Mm -hmm. Seva bhav also has to be reciprocated mm -hmm. by the patient, by families, by societies. I mean, this government has not exempted healthcare from the Consumer Protection Act. And so, anyone just needs to write a postcard. I don't know if you get it today, but it's 5 rupees. And then the government fights on your behalf against the doctor or the hospital. That's point number one. Excellent point. Dousri side bhi. Dousri baat rahi, jahan tak stifling of, you know, the hospitals. There is they want the best quality. Uske parameters, jo 1500 mein nahi the, jo 1900 mein nahi the, jo 10 saal pehle bhi nahi the, ki ye sab aapko chahiye hi chahiye. Is quality ki machine honi chahiye, is quality ka doctor, is quality ki nurse, and aap charges dete hain jo below cost. Then about brain drain, and you know in the middle it had stopped for 20 years. Very few people were going. Now again, we see most youngsters want to go abroad. No, these are the ones who are eating. That's why they are going. The new ones who are coming out, they want to go abroad. Because the respect which this profession had is not there. You go on social media, you will get the calls. When he is telling that there is respect abroad for the Indian doctor, then he will go there. यहाँ तो गाली खा रहा है, you know they beat you up, they do everything and governments do nothing. वो एक law जो pass किया है, उसमें भी कोई arrest नहीं होता, कोई FIR नहीं होता. So I think the golden age of healthcare in this country, which this country saw in the last 25, 30 years, is is now coming to an end, where the government will become the payer and they will pay very very less and they they are saying that 80 to 90 percent of all patients will come through it's that huge. scheme, and आपके सेवा भाव होनी चाहिए तो एक-एक करके hospital के कमरे बंद हो जाएंगे. बंद हो जाएंगे. Because healthcare is not just about feeling your pulse and giving something, you know, medicine which I have prepared. It's about evidence-based medicine. You can go to jail for not doing the right thing. You can be uh, uh, for you have charged 1,000 rupees for something. You, the Supreme Court can say, a crore rupee aap har jana dijiye, wo kaan se aega? It has to come from the system. So, the next health minister is sitting with a quack under the banner of the system. So, seva bhaav ka jo hai, uske saath, baaki thing. So, ye cheez hai hame pahunchani hai wahan tak. Sahih shabdo mein, you're right, you're right, you're right. Unko baalum hai. 6,000 crore mein, agar... Lekin jab bhoat jaga se awaz aayegi, to kaan khulenge. Sir, wo nahi awaz paida karenge na. They'll do something else. 6,000 crore rupay mein, if we can give inpatient service to the population of Mexico, US and Canada put together, 1 billion dollars, to phir to humne jagat jeet liya. They have to bring it at least to 60,000, ideally to 1 lakh crores to be able to service those 50 crores whom they want. And unless they, I mean the government wants the private sector and and bade, ab to request kar rahe hai, baad mein, you know, they may compel kar rahe hai, harsh also, abhi request kar rahe hai, but 
सारे स्टेट आपसे जो इलेक्ट्रिसिटी चार्जेस होते हैं वो सिनेमा हॉल के बराबर होता है मारुति कंपनी इंडस्ट्री गेट्स लोअर टैरिफ को वो इंडस्ट्री टैरिफ है आपको चार्ज होता है कमर्शियल रेट सिनेमा हॉल वाला और आप आपसे सेवा भाव की एक्सपेक्टेशन कर रहे हैं तो ये भी एक बड़ा पॉइंट है अगर आप जीएसटी में भी देखो तो हॉस्पिटल एवरी All we do is go to them and say, please evaluate and give us a license. They are regulatory; they become ah. your partner. Then they say, no, no. You sign, karo five percent profit. Imagine. So see, in the short term, all companies need to go. Now, take license. Le lo. What's the long term goal? Nikalo, yahan se. Nikalo. Yo, yo, you're right. Ye, ye, आवाज आ रही है. Nikalo yahan se. नहीं देखो सर. पहले सिर्फ brain drain था. What sir said. Now it is what Sachin saying. What he's saying is brain drain plus capital drain. Capital drain. Yeah, so you're not going to afford it as a country. short term. बहुत अच्छा लग रहा है. Yeah, having said that, I am very very happy with what was said just earlier. How Modi is trying to sell India. At the same time, he has to be a little more considerate towards the healthcare sector and understand what a vital service they are doing. There are of course outliers, or maybe more more than outliers. who are not doing the right thing they should be brought in line however the sector show has to be kept somehow viable on that note i will just uh, terminate the discussion uh, because we are running out of time but uh, thank you very much what a great discussion it has been how the caliber of the dialogue i which i have noticed is very very high and more than that uh, there was a bonhomi as well as some self deprecating humor for all of us which was also extremely enjoyable uh, on the heal in india piece old age healing in india and wellness healing in india is something which we can uh, discuss some other time because some people are there from that sector but it was great to uh, be here and be with all of you thank you very much everybody thank you.